He grew up on a farm, he has three economics degrees, and he's a big fan of birthdays. His name is Jason Evans, and he is the Dean of our College of Food Innovation and Technology here at Johnson & Wales University. Jason, thank you so much for joining us for the first Dean's Corner. Thanks, Lindsay. I'm excited. You're coming up on your third year here at Johnson & Wales after the transition from the College of Culinary Arts to the College of Food Innovation and Technology. We're going to talk about that, but first I want to talk about your favorite subject. Myself. Yourself, of course. <laughs> so let's dive right in. You grew up on that farm, so tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, southern West Virginia. It was a family farm, beef, cattle, and hay. Um, I think if you would have asked me as a 10-year-old whether I really enjoy growing up on a farm, I would have told you that it's too much work. But um, I, I would say now that experience is the most important part of my DNA. I'm sure. Did you have a favorite activity on the farm, a favorite animal? A until I was... 12 or 13 even, I was actually really terrified of cattle. Really? Um, you were yes. in the wrong place for I that. I was terrified <laughs> of them. Um, I, I, I built a relationship, and you're going to laugh at this, but with, with one particular cow. This is why I asked. I had a right. feeling. One Do tell. One particular cow. And my dad, I think, was so relieved that I was finally coming around mm -hmm. that he gave her to me. So she was mine, and I really took ownership of that and began to really enjoy anything that had to do with the cow or the cattle piece of what we did. Ultimately, that determined what I did in graduate school. So I credit my dad being patient enough for me to enjoy what we did on the farm with my professional trajectory. What did you name the cow? I need to know. <laughs> uh, her name was Babe. <laughs> Wrong animal, Jason. Yeah. That's okay. So you say that that really set you up for your yeah. professional trajectory. Right out of high school, I, I went to college, not really at the time even knowing uh, what I should study. I majored in psych, decided to pick up an, an, an econ major as well, so I double majored. By the time I graduated from University of Virginia, I, there were really pieces of agriculture and food and those businesses that I missed. So that meant that I, in graduate school, got to merge my new love for economics with my lifelong love of agriculture, and so agricultural economics. From there, did you go into higher ed immediately? I did. I, I actually was on faculty at WVU uh, for two years after, after graduating with my PhD, and that's how I ended up in the SUNY system in upstate New York at an agricultural campus. So there's an on-campus farm, about 900 acres, uh, livestock and dairy and poultry and crops. It was a community of farmers. I would say that the transition to living in an urban environment and working in an urban environment has been the toughest part of this for me. My husband and I both thought that just a couple of months in Providence and we would be very urbane, um, and we're not. But the truth is, making the connection between my past professional life and my interests and what Johnson & Wales does is incredibly intuitive. It's natural, it's easy, because food is a system. Here, we're right in the city, we're right in the heart of downtown Providence, but you're bringing in this agricultural economics background. How do you bring all of that in to create student success opportunities here? Sure. I think that you would find core system components and core sustainability ideals playing out in our labs every day, and that includes how we manage food waste. We also, of course, have uh, what we call Wildcat Meadow now, which is uh, our gardens out front that our uh, sustainable food system students are managing. Um, and they have a number of field experiences where they're able to meet with and talk with fishermen and farmers. So it really pervades every part of their experience. So many young people right now are weighing the decision to get that college degree versus going right into the industry. So what would you say to them, someone sure. who's struggling with that? An undergraduate degree is to make you trainable, right? It's putting you through a long-term, complex, challenging thing, you proving to yourself that you can do it, you learning how to manage stress throughout that experience. The professionalism and soft skills that our students leave with they're learning life skills that even while they're here, they probably underestimate the importance of. But when they walk into industry, employers love our graduates for those reasons. We've taught them how to work in a workplace while providing a, a safe place to fail. We have programs that naturally require connectivity with other colleges, like 
food and beverage industry management, food and beverage entrepreneurship. We also build in uh, courses related to food history and food culture and food media and food writing. Um, and we do that because we're a comprehensive university. We do want to expose students to different ways of thinking about their passion, their interests, and how it might align with a career trajectory. An interest in food can set you up for a career in frankly anything. I want to have a little bit of fun with you sure. and Good. play a quick little lightning round Great. of questions. Favorite movie or book? I'll give you that option. My favorite movie is Silence of the Lambs. That says a lot about it you. <laughs> it does. It's okay. written brilliantly. Mm -hmm. but what are you listening to right now? Podcast? Music? That's a very embarrassing question for I me because my, my taste in music align with literally no ones. This is a very deep response to what is a very simple okay. question. My dad unexpectedly and, and tragically died in 2018. And I'm finding myself since then reconnecting with him and the music that I'm listening mm -hmm. to. Classic country, a lot of Southern gospel. Um, but of course, I, I pepper in there lots of really, really awful 80s hairband power ballads. Love that. What is your favorite thing to cook or eat or both? So my favorite cuisine is, is, is Indian. Um, though Peruvian and now Indonesian are, are, are close seconds and thirds for me. What's the best piece of advice you ever got? I automatically think about my dad and that no matter how successful you are in life, you're never too successful to, to roll up your sleeves and do what needs to be done. Is there anything else that you want folks to know about you that maybe they don't know or they're learning right now? That, well, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an onion, really. <laughs> there's, there's, a lot of layers. Lots. I count myself an introvert, yet I find myself in this very public yep. job that requires a lot of social interaction. I think there are students that sometimes can't possibly see themselves as leaders, can't possibly see themselves as in charge of something, as being the face of something, because they're introverted or because they're shy. Absolutely not the case. It just means that you have to work a little bit differently at it. I think that we have defined leadership in our culture so poorly as this thing that's mystical that only a few people can achieve through kindness. You practice everyday leadership. That's all leaders do, right? They change the course of something for the better. And you can do that every day.